My talk put a map on it. Uh, the It's the same talk I gave in Montreal, so if anyone was in Montreal, I hope you liked it a lot, because it's going to be the same. So who am I? Uh, I did communication studies at Concordia University in Montreal, which is a very hands-on program that does a lot of media, and I did the intermedia stream, which is very vague and fluctuates between when I was there, it was all about hypertext and HTML. Other times, it's flash animations or like weird interactive spaces. Uh, but it was a great place to teach myself WordPress because they were teaching us how to use Dreamweaver in 2003, like animals. <laughs> um, so I've been using HTML and CSS. Got really into the whole uh, XHTML thing back when that was cool. Uh, I founded WordCamp Montreal in 2009 and was an organizer for many years, although I'm no longer an organizer uh, actively. And I've worked most of my career for Global Voices, which uh, we'll see lots of examples from. Uh, but it is a website where we have citizen journalism about the whole world. And specifically, originally, it was about blogs. So it was like, Blogs are all over the world, but how can you find them? And you can't even read them because they're not in English. But it's so important because that was the whole thing about the internet. It was like, oh, everyone's going to have a blog, and we're all going to understand each other. And it was like, no, we're all going to read Drudge Report every day, and that's it. So Global Voices was the solution to that. Now we do a lot of social media reporting on what people are saying still, as well as a lot of advocacy work and things like uh, bloggers who are in jail and trying to help them with our advocacy project. Uh, so that's where I'm coming from with the mapping stuff. Uh, we have a lot of translation stuff is like a huge part of our thing because we have content from other languages into English and also uh, content back out into language. So we've got dozens of languages. Uh, and interestingly, we don't use multi-site because the site was founded in 2005 before WordPress MU even existed, let alone multi-site. Uh, so we still have a bunch of independent sites all networked together with uh, duct tape and toothpaste. So what are we going to talk about? I wanted to make this a really useful talk for anyone. Um, so it's not particularly for developers uh, in, the con in the sense of like what the content is, but this is a complicated process I'm going to describe. So you'll need a developer pretty much in order to do what I'm talking about. Uh, so to start, though, I'm going to just go over what is geolocation, which is kind of obvious, but we're going to talk about it in some detail to think about it in terms of how you can use it in your sites and why you would use it and why you shouldn't use it for some other reasons. Uh, I'm going to go over what just like fumes of geolocation exist in WordPress core that we can care about and maybe dream about for the future. Uh, I'm going to talk about the Geo Mashup plugin uh, and its core features and how they're helpful and how they sort of instantiate the concepts. Uh, talk about the configuration because it's a huge elaborate plugin. So I'm going to give some time to think about if you do want to use it, what you should plan. Uh, and then some stuff about how to make the maps that it generates look good and work well in your site because it doesn't always happen by default like that. Oh no, is that always going to happen? OK, I'll just. Anyway, so what is geolocation? At its core, it's choosing coordinates for your objects. So what I mean there is in a WordPress site, you have a bunch of objects. So the posts are objects. Custom posts are posts. Uh, users are objects. Taxonomy is objects. So anything can theoretically have a, G a location assigned to it. Uh, and locations are kind of simple in this context. They're coordinates. So it's an exact point on planet Earth uh, is what we're talking about. Um, next showing that information. And the first way to show it is just when you're looking at the object, whatever it is, there's some indication of where it is and what the uh, location that you've set for it. Then there's displaying maps. And they're separate. Maps is show a space and then have the objects populated into it. Um, and then the one, oh no. OK. The, the, the one that uh, a lot of people are getting excited about and that's really important and useful if you need it is being able to, uh, do, could you get Tom? Yeah. Um, take a location and say, OK, now which objects are in there? And let the user define what the, the area is. Oh, you'll hold it. OK. Uh, this will be 
I feel so luxurious. All right. Next. Next, please. Um, okay, so. What? Maybe it's the cord. It was working fine for the last one. No, it wasn't this computer. No, no, but it was the same port. Same cord. Yeah, maybe it's the port. Okay. So is there geolocation in WordPress? And the answer is basically no. Uh, you can't rely on it at all. But WordPress.com as a system does have geolocation in a very rudimentary way. And so it's important to take it into account. Uh, does it do anything? Not really. There's no way to show a map on WordPress.com using that data. There's no way to show, in almost all of the contexts I described, nothing will happen except displaying location as metadata, which uh, you could see here. So in WordPress.com, part of their weird special interface that's not even in WordPress, you can choose a point. Uh, and then here in 2014, that's what you get out of it. So if your users are like, I wonder what he tagged it as. And the idea here is that it happens automatically in the mobile app. So if you're out in the world and you're like taking a picture of a protest and posting it to your blog, then WordPress is going to be like, oh, wherever you were when you did that is going to get logged in, um, which is actually kind of awful in a lot of ways. Because if you just happen to be using your phone the, and you're writing about a different country, like Global Voices, we're almost always writing about people in other countries, then your coordinates are totally irrelevant. Um, but nonetheless, it gives us a place to store the data. So we want to make sure we're storing that because it's a, such a good place for different plugins to duplicate their data and then have it as a backup so that if you get a new plugin, it can still check this and get the coordinates for the data, even though it doesn't use the same uh, database structure as your other plugin. So that's right. Oh, and I'll just say, please turn off your noise making things for the sake of the video. And also, if you have any questions at any time, just let me know. I'm going to go as fast as I can and say as much as I can in my time. Uh, so there won't be time for questions. The time for questions is as soon as you have them. So why, why would we bother with this geolocation? So one reason, if it's relevant, is ambient awareness so that users can just know it's from a certain place. Maybe they're curious. Maybe uh, it's somehow fascinating or surprising. Uh, but that's a reason. Um, another one is discovery. So you want people like, you, you know, discovery as in when you go to your blog homepage, you have like featured posts and you have the post swell, you have headlines. Those are all ways for people to find content to keep moving through your site and clicking on things. And so using maps gives you a really colorful, fun, animated way pretty easily uh, if it's appropriate. Um, hyper local content. So if you need people to find things that are super relevant to them, a map is a really nice way because they can just lo look on the map and naturally understand which elements of the map are close enough to them or too far away. Maybe if we had a map of Toronto, we'd all be like, well, I'm not coming to Humber College all the way out here. Uh, but if we just look at it as text, we might never notice how far away we are from downtown. Um, and then finally, just in case, if, if you have content where it's relevant, where it's from or where place it's about, maybe it's worth logging that geodata because in the future you'll want to have a map. And at that time, you want that map to be full and not empty because you never tagged any posts uh, as you were creating hundreds and hundreds, you know, and you're never going to go back. So on the other hand, does everything belong on a map? Absolutely not. Uh, maps come with a lot of compromises. And so you should only be using them when it's relevant and when it makes sense. So most of all, they're huge. In order for the maps to work in this like, sense of geo mashup, they have to be enormous or, or people don't know, aren't able to use them effectively. So they take up a lot of space. They take up a lot of mental space. So as soon as you have a map on your page, it's nice because people are drawn into it and they'll want to click on the pins and go to things. But everything else takes a back seat now because nothing is going to be as colorful or as interesting. Um, and from a performance perspective, they slow everything down. Your whole browser slows down every time you open a page with a map in it. So it better have a reason. Um, in terms of navigation, if you have complex content, there are use cases where a map is like just solves so many problems at once that it's perfect. But there's a lot of cases where there's way more effective and efficient ways to help people find the content they need. Um, and 
you need to make sure your content makes sense, right? Like if you're doing a blog where you're always sitting in home writing, geotagging your posts as your house over and over again is really boring and pointless. Uh, so at that point, don't do it, right? You, but if you're writing restaurant reviews, then maybe it is worth it just in case because one day you'll be like, look, now I have a map of all my restaurant reviews and you can see the city in terms of what my mouth thought. So uh, my policy is use only when needed. So if you need it, put it in or it's harmless. Like if you have a page on your site with a big map and it's like people can click on the map and then look at it, well then the performance isn't really a problem. They chose that. Uh, unlike having it on your homepage at the top where it's really going to take up space in all the senses. Um, and put your users first, right? Think about what do they need? Do they need it? Um, in both senses, both in terms of don't do it if they don't need it and also if they need it, do it, even though, as I'm going to point out, it's not super easy. So Geo Mashup is a very powerful plugin. Here's the page. It's a little bit out of date, but you can see it's got some stars and it's got lots of text. And we'll learn a lot more about it. So why did, why, why did I pick Geo Mashup for Global Voices and why am I bothering to tell you about it? Uh, you need a plugin. You're not going to be able to get this done without a plugin. So unfortunately, that's not an option because the best plugin is always no plugin. Find a way to do it without a plugin. Unfortunately, that's off the table. So this one is powerful, customizable, and integrated. And that, well, by that I mean it's hard to find a thing that he, the creator hasn't somehow thought of and come up with some convoluted solution for you. Uh, and it's got its fingers all into the user system and the post system. And so as you dig into the plugin, it, it, it's always there, like what you need. Um, it cooperates with the WordPress geodata, so it has its own tables. Like it's not going to use, because the geodata is post meta, it's not fast for queries and stuff. So it creates its own tables uh, that logs all the objects with their coordinates, but it, you can back them up into that field and you can import stuff in that field into the geo mashup table both ways, which is really nice because you don't want to become addicted to a plugin is the worst thing that can happen. And Geo Mashup is a plugin that on many ways you will get addicted to, but at least in this one way, uh, you can leave, right? You want to be able to leave if things get bad or if something way better comes along. Okay, uh, so it has everything I needed. It handles the tagging, the mapping, the search, um, and it's free and the guy who runs it is like a very WordPress kind of thing. Uh, he's like, hey, come help me. And he's always trying to help people and uh, that's, that's a nice thing. Um, although paid plugins are also convenient because they give you immediate support. So, but I haven't found a paid plugin that does everything this does. So uh, why not Geo? Why, why would you choose something else? Uh, and the first one is the exact same thing as last time, as the one before. It's super big and powerful and it has everything and that's not always what you want. And it's going to cost more performance and everything than a very precise plugin. Uh, it takes forever to set up. I find testing it is really hard. Testing it on all devices, especially because maps are very finicky on phones and stuff. Um, so yeah, it's my opinion, right? But pff, what comes out of the box when you turn this on isn't pretty in a lot of ways. So you need to take the time to integrate your theme into it. It doesn't do a great job by default, which isn't so shocking uh, because it's like impossible to integrate someone else's theme into your plugin really elegant. Um, but it barely even tries, so it's kind of annoying. Uh, it's almost like we left this ugly so because we wanted you to do the, your work rather than giving you something nice enough that doesn't match your design. Um, awkward code. Not unlike WordPress, there's a lot of functions where you're like, really, why would you do it that way? Like, there's a lack of documentation in the code. So it's not like a super perfect plugin. Um, and that can be frustrating when you're debugging things, but at the same time, it's very powerful, and so that's not the end of the world. Um, and there are other plugins that have very precise tasks, like if you just need a store locator or something along those lines, there are store locator plugins that will probably solve your problems more easily because they're going to just give you a workflow that's really obvious, and they're going to have more like tight styling by default because they know what your use case is. Whereas Geo Mashup is super generic. It's like it can solve any problem, but as a result, it feels more like a toolbox than like an IKEA product, right? Uh, all right. 
So what, what was the first thing I did with this? Was the Rising Voices microgrants. Rising Voices is the section of Global Voices that focuses on helping communities that aren't really online getting online and blogging and stuff. Uh, one of the things we do is we have these little like $1,000, $5,000 grants that we give to local community groups. Uh, in different parts of the world. And so what they do is they come, they have an application process, we use Gravity Forms, they submit their application, it becomes a post, um, and then we have them all tagged. So this was one that we did about the Amazon region of South America. So when you come to the page, you could see all the different applications uh, from where they came from. And we've done other ones where it was the whole world, so you could really see how many people had uh, had, had applied and, and it was really nice because there was like 800 so it was like look it's so active it's a great way of showing how active something is without taking up a lot of space because the pins tell a story that is hard to you know otherwise you'd be like 800 posts a little text trying to but it's hard to make that look important uh, so you could navigate the proposals and then on each proposal uh, in the sidebar where there's the metadata like the user who posted it and stuff uh, a little map saying here's where this happened uh, and a link to go back to a big map and show this one on the map so you could go find uh, related ones. All right, another example is the more sort of journalistic one because most of our work is like reporting. Um, and so I built a, a related system where uh, it's just the blog posts, whatever the blog posts are. In this case, it's our community website where we have like internal uh, blog. Uh, so on the home page, you see the map and you can like click and it would open a box and you'd see the preview and you click the headline to go to the post. Um, and then another thing I thought was fun was uh, an embed inside the post that just shows where this post is. So in this site, I didn't put it in the sidebar. I didn't want it to be permanent metadata because it wasn't always there and it wasn't always relevant. Often it's not relevant where the post is. Um, but what they can do though is have a short code inside the post that just says, show whatever location I said on this post, uh, and then it lets them do a caption. So basically, it's an animated image embed that gives context. So users are like, if, like if you were writing about a weird country, people don't know where it is. You're like, oh, where's Syria? People don't know. You, you tag the post with the location in Syria. You embed the map, and you say, like, this takes place in Syria with nearby countries, na 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 and people can like zoom in and out and play around with it. Uh, so that's just two of the like ways I've used it. Um, and wait, did I have anything? Yes. All right. So how do we geotag things? It's really easy. It, you, it's familiar to anyone who used Google Maps. I have the example of how it looks in the post editor. It's a meta box. Uh, it, this says find a new location. There's a text field, you type, you hit enter, and what happens in Google Maps happens, and it picks the spot. So I said Montreal, and it did this. Um, and then it has a little address where it knows like, what the place is in like, a Google sense, and then more importantly, the coordinates, and there's a way of saving them. So you could save like my house and just pick my house without searching for it each time. Uh, really similar, the users one. So this would be in your user page. Everyone has this as an option, and then it'll save uh, where you're from. So this I put, that's where I live and that's where I was, uh, grew up <sighs> as an example. So what's the hard part though? Yeah, this is easy. What's not easy is when you have content and there's not an obvious location. If it's a store, if it's a restaurant, you know exactly what the location is. What if it's a post about you? Do you put where you live, where you were born, where you are right now? Um, you only get one location with Geo Mashup, and probably with most plugins are gonna have this limitation. Uh, and you kind of want it that way because you don't want your same pin showing up in multiple spots and making the amount of actual posts ambiguous. So you have to think about your content and make a plan at the beginning, hopefully, so that whatever your strategy is, it applies to all the posts equally, and there's not some of them that are tagged with where you were when you posted it, and some of them that are tagged with uh, what, what it's about in the place where it's about. Right. So the core like feature of Geo Mashup is the global map, which is just show the posts. Uh, so like on your homepage, you just set a limit. You're like no more than 50, no more than 100, uh, but like show them all. The equivalent of the homepage of a blog where it just shows the recent ones. 
um, the way it's sort of the, the default functioning. You click on a pin, it opens a box with a preview. Uh, this is a preview that I have styled to match our theme uh, and to have the metadata that we would normally show on a post. Like this is, I basically made, this is what would be in the content well, uh, but in a little box. Um, all right, so you can customize a lot of things about the way this map works, and I'll talk more about that later. But things like the zoom level, how, how much of the world you can see, uh, how many posts to show. Um, and ultimately, like the global map is, is like the one where you can go and use WP Query, if you know what that is. So you can basically say, summon any specific content that's in your site with a lot of power uh, by just passing a ton of options into map content equals global. It's essentially like default map. Map content equals single is very specific, and that's the one where it's only the thing, only the post you're looking at right now, show it on a map, there's one pin, clicking the pin, does nothing, you're already on the post, uh, but what you can do is zoom out and zoom in and, and move around and see what's happening. Um, so it's not very interactive, it's more just something to look at, a way of showing the metadata that's not just like, here's the numbers of the coordinates, good luck. Um, so one of the really interesting options is to create a link back to the original map. So it's in Spanish, but it says, show the world map. So then if I click this, I would show the, whole, the map of the world with this particular post opened up by default. So it's a way of like sending people back and forth to posts, if, uh, to the map and to content, if that's what you want. Uh, and this, yeah, and you can, and I'll talk more about how you integrate that using PHP or shortcodes. Yeah, so there's, the, so a lot of these, all of these things, the global and the single, there's a ton of shortcodes that you can use, or you can go straight to the PHP. It offers both ways. Um, okay, so there's some more map types. I'll go over them quickly. Contextual is like global, but it says whatever posts were loaded in the main query for this page, use that. So if you're on the like China category, it's going to show those posts. If you're on the home page, it's going to show the recent post. Uh, if you're on a single page, it's going to show just that post, which is bad. You should use the single one for that. Radius, which says, uh, which is tricky to use, but it lets you say, here's the spot. Show me everything within a certain range of that spot geographically. And that's, it's a really complicated process, like mathematically and database-wise, uh, but it's possible. So you can show a map and with a place. So you give it like the name, like an accurate, sort of that search name, uh, and then it'll show you a map of that. Little unreliable. You sort of want a controlled vocabulary of places if you're going to use that, but it, it, it is an option it, separate from just the exact coordinates you want to show. Um, custom. So this is basically using the map type equals global, and then you pass in whatever the hell you want. So one of them is you can just pass it object IDs. So if what you want is a map of like a few very precise posts, you can just get their post IDs, paste them into the short code, and now you have a map of only like these eight posts. Uh, or you can use WP query, including taxonomies, including everything else. So there's a lot of uh, customization, if that's what you want, uh, and then you can show your users. So that can be a fun point of community. Patrick? Yes. And can you set like um, like a vector or like an area within the map, and then use the points to set distribution? So you could like map like distribution variance over different defined areas, say a postcode, for example. I don't know. The postal code it says it does work. Okay. Um, but it's tricky. Yeah, the radius search you have to pass it coordinates. So you would have to use one of the other means within the system to get the coordinates and then do a radius search based on that. I haven't done a lot of work with the radius search, so I can't, I can't tell you the gotchas about it, but it seems like limitless if you're willing to go down the relevant rabbit holes. Um, okay, so tons of options. You don't want to use all of these. Almost no sites should use all of these unless they're about geography. What you need to do is find the exact features you need implement them, document them so your users know what's going to happen, and then use them very carefully after st carefully styling each piece that you're going to use for your site. If you go and try and style all these different types of maps to fit in your theme, you're never going to finish. Uh, you need to only pick the ones you need, make sure they work, uh, and then style them. So 
that's just my point. If you're feeling overwhelmed, don't worry. I think most sites would probably only want a couple of these options. Um, but they're nice partially because stuff like the object IDs means that you can use short codes inside of your content to say only in this one post am I even going to like reference geography and the whole rest of the site doesn't have any geolocation or mapping built into it. So it's, it's convenient in that sense that you don't have to commit too hard if you don't want to. Okay, so the, the plugin uses a great hybrid system where there's all these like PHP uh, static functions that you can call in your theme, like a template tag, um, but they all have an equivalent short code. And so there's just a really long list with so many specific things. So this one is show the map. That's the one, the global map or the single map. This is the full post. So one of the options you have is to have a section in your site where the post loads so that the map doesn't have to have pop-ups inside of it. Instead, when you click on something, a box below the map or above the map uh, fills with the content of the post. And you can do that by just having these two short codes in a post, you could create that interface after it's in it's ensuring that your theme will style it well. Um, and then this one, this was the location info, which is just that way of saying like Montreal, Quebec. All right. Uh huh. So it goes it, easy. Yeah. So the PHP, honestly, I think using the PHP is like going to be the best bet in a lot of cases because using short codes seems easy, but you still have to do a ton of styling to make sure it's going to look good. So by that point, PHP is a good way if you need it for the site. Short codes are good if you just need it for that particular piece of content. Okay, so this is a little, like one of the things that happens is when you start using all the special features of this plugin or even just trying to get the short code with its default values to function inside your theme, you end up with a lot of parameters because no, the defaults often are what you want. So in this case, the height, the width, the zoom, which is how much of the map you see, the overview control, I don't even remember what that is. Uh, and then the map type control, so that's like whether you, they can switch to satellite and stuff. Uh, so in this case, I'm like sort of locking it down with the overview control. So uh, in PHP, you can do the same thing. So you have this WP parse args, which is the system that lets you choose, like with WP query, whether you want to have height equals 200 uh, or the PHP array format. So it's the same information, but formatted as an array. So the point of this is you have your options uh, and you need to plan for each one how you want to do it, but this is the best way if you can swing it. Like in my opinion, um, it's so much cleaner, it's easier for version control because when you change something like this in version control, it changes the whole line, which is really stupid, whereas here you can change the value and there'll be only one line edited and all the rest will be clean. All right, what's the next one? Okay, and um, the, uh, another thing I'll add is that if you know how to build your own short codes, which if you're going to be implementing GeoMashup in any kind of elaborate way, learning sh how to build a short code is going to be a lot easier. So you should figure that out. Um, make your own short codes. Because in my experience, I was like, this is what I'm going to have to do every time because this is what I want. So that's really annoying. Uh, and my users are never going to get it right. If I'm handing this task off to someone else, they're going to screw it up every time. So what I did, I just gv underscore map, and it calls the PHP function with all my defaults. So I found that to be worthwhile because there was so much complexity to it. Um, it's nice that the developer offers so much control in the short codes, but it's not actually good to use it that way in, in my experience. Okay, so there's a lot of configuration pages. I'm not going to go everything, but I just wanted to talk about a few gotchas that are really important. So you have up at the top, you can see there's like overall, single, like there's tons of options and tabs. So the map provider, right, it's Google. Just use Google. There's, there's also OpenStreetMap support, but a lot of the features of the, like the plugin, it's a whole other debugging process to use the other map providers. Uh, so, and people understand and expect Google. Um, the global mashup page, so the way it does the, th the link that says show this on the big map is you create a page that's a full, like that's the biggest map possible, and then uh, you set it here. So just make sure that you have this if you want that feature to work. Otherwise, it's, it doesn't like magically create, or not magically, but it doesn't create an automatic endpoint that shows a full-size map. Um, 
So you can collect location, right? So you can see all the different things. And if you have custom post types, they'll just show up here. So you can control which ones it shows for. Um, so include taxonomies, I wanted to point out that this is unticked. What include taxonomies does is really weird and the documentation doesn't perfectly explain it, but it's basically that like each category has a color and then on the map for each post you see the pin is the color of the category. Maybe that's good. You can use that feature if you want, but use it consciously because when you're not paying attention, it's not going to do anything interesting and it's just confusing to users why there's different colors. Um, so I would turn that off until you actively figure out what it does and want to use it. Copy geodata meta fields, that's what I was talking about, the default WordPress meta fields. Just make sure that box is checked so that you're always back, backing up back and forth to those fields. Sorry about that. Yeah. So it's backing up to meta fields, that means it is going to be available for the API version of WordPress if you choose it. So if I need to pull that information, I can pull that information from uh, WP API. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. That's a nice thing because it, then it's a, it's a post meta field. Right. So the WP API, which is a JSON way of accessing data from the site, will have access to it without you having to hook in. Because like, <laughs> in the long run, um, oh, weird. Um, in the long run, that was so weird. Uh, I'm too stable. So, whoa. <laughs> I'm going to continue. <laughs> All right. So map type configuration. Um, there's, so there's multiple different map type configurations along the top. You can see single, global, and contextual. I already talked about the differences between those. Um, and so they have mostly the same options. So I'm just going to show you one th once for all of them. The first one is how wide is it? And it's like kind of the biggest tragedy of this plugin is that it's sort of based on pixels dimensions and not relative dimensions. So it does, that, though, at least offer a 100% size. So this is what I think it should have by default and what all of you should use. Set the width to 100 so that whatever it's in, it fills it. And then height, uh, I pick a height that looks good with your, the pop-ups as you've styled them. Um, and map height is one that you're going to want to manage on a map-by-map -map basis in a lot of cases. But you could set a default so that, for example, for the single map, the one you embed inside a post, you can usually know how tall that one's going to be. So set the default height to something reasonable. OK, enable scroll reel zoom is, you know when you're scrolling down a page and there's a map on it, and then it stops, and now you're zooming out of the map? You turn this off. Users don't want that. Nobody wants that. Um, only on the main Google Maps site maybe do people want that. And even there, it's like a tricky feature. So turn it off. Um, there's a terrible thing that happens with this plugin, which is that in the admin, you have a map where you're choosing your locations, and that happens. As you're scrolling through the admin, it gets caught, and you, never, you can never find the edit flow or whatever is below it. I, he really needs to add a feature that's like also in the admin. Um, default zoom level. So the zoom level in Google Maps means clicking plus and clicking minus. So the numbers are like 0 to 20, where 0 is like, like sort of the Earth twice, pretty much. In almost all contexts, you see like it's wrapped around and you get back to Russia again. Um, so 2, in my experience, with like a reasonable proportion, 2 gives you the whole world with a little bit cut off in the corners. Um, if you're dealing with like, you know, your landmine scanning a field, maybe you would use 20. 20 is like way too close in almost all contexts. Um, but pick the default that makes sense and you'll have to play around. But the nice thing is you, you can set it to five, go preview the map that you're looking at, and then just go plus and minus and count how many times you click it and come change the number to this. You don't have to completely guess, which is what I was doing before. I was like, what about three? What about four? No, you don't have to do that. Um, so marker selection behaviors is just really important and this sort of automatic selection, these, this conglomeration. And what this means, open in new window means, open info window means that when you click the pin, uh, the little pop-up happens and you see the post. If this is unticked, you click the pin and nothing will happen. So just make sure that you've thought about these ones and how they work. Um, also, automatic selection when you open the page, whether or not one of them opens, or if you just if they all stay closed and someone has to click in order to see a post. All right. So those are some of the like 
relevant ones. Uh, this is the dramatically overwhelming list of uh, parameters that you can use for both the shortcodes and the PHP function uh, to show a map. And I'm not even going to try to go through it. Uh, I haven't used many of these I've never even used, uh, and I don't necessarily understand what they do. But the point is, you have lots of options, and you may or may not need to deal with many of them. Uh, for example, if you were going to do a radius search, there's like five or six of these that you're going to have to involve in your life um, to make it work. OK. Um, and, then, and so just remember, that's all there. Now, the worst thing, like I said, the responsiveness. Uh, when you turn it on, it's just this little shitty box. And if you make your window small, it's just cut off. Uh, it looks terrible. So the width 100% as a baseline, I find I can make that work. Height in pixels, find a balance, right? So what I'm showing you here is that this is how the same map looks with a given width at 100% and height as just whatever, like twice as tall as this so that there's space around it so people can still use the map. And then on like an iPad or something, it might look like that. So it's kind of tricky and you've got to test it. Um, yeah. And good luck. Uh, <laughs> what I did, what I did, no, not in good luck, and use special mobile config, uh, which is, in my experience, I, I just couldn't find a balance here that worked on phones. Like, by the time it was on a phone, you know, the screen is so small, it's really hard to use. Uh, so what I use is something called Mobile ESP, and there's a link here, and it's a little PHP script that just looks through various heuristics about the, pay, about the person visiting and tries to figure out if they're a mobile phone or not. So the nice thing is that it just handles all phones and phone types, so it's going to abstract out a lot of the work that you might be doing to see. Is it an iPhone? Is it an Android? Is it like a big-ass Android? Is it a tablet? So you could say only smartphones. If it's a smartphone, uh, do something. And so what I've done is, if it's a smartphone, I add filters using the WordPress filter API the, uh, to change the settings being passed to geo mashup and make them different. So I filter the height and the zoom. It's zoom is really important in that context, because when you make the map smaller, you need to make the zoom different in order to fit the same amount of stuff. right? Because when we were here, it's like one zoom level that's going to work with all this width where you're like, oh, it's OK. It won't be too cramped. There's like space on the side so it can sort of fill it vertically. But then here, you're like, no, you really need to have lots of space around it. Uh, or the, nothing is going to be visible. Um, and then the other thing to think about is, depending on what the map is for, just don't show it. Just hide it. So um, if, if is smartphone from mobile ESP, don't show the map that was just there for fun to add flavor. Because it's not fun to navigate a map like that to look for a post on, a, on an iPhone. What you want to do is just see headlines, basically, headlines and pictures, and choose something quickly. Um, and then if you hide it completely in the PHP uh, using a filter or whatnot, you get the huge bonus that the phone isn't downloading a map, which is like megabytes, and it's slow, and it's using up people's data, and all that stuff. So if it's in the content, if it's vital to the content, then do all this stuff to make it work. right? If it's not, just hide it and move on. Because the process of making responsive sites, part of it is just knowing what to hide, knowing what isn't important. And uh, hiding these maps is a great uh, optimization. But do it at the PHP level. Don't just hide it with CSS, because then it might still download and just not be seen, which would be a terrible experience. Sorry, you can also link out to Google. So you see everybody has Google Apps uh, or Google Map Apps. You can potentially get the URL of that location and just link it out. You can link out to a location, but that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about having our content inside a map. So if you link out, you can link to it. Of course, you can link to a location. but it's not going to have your content in it. It's not going to have your post preview. It's not going to have the featured images, right? But that it so when, you, when you're saying it's going to load up all that information from Google Maps, right? When you show a map, yeah. Yes. So there are two ways of looking. Either we can load the Google Map image, right? There is an image option from Google Maps where you can. I, I don't know. Ah, uh -huh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
There, there are options. You could also, what you could also do if it was a single map, you could just say, oh, when it's single, I show that text description of where it's from. And you can click and maybe go to Google Maps or something. Like, there's different options like that. Creating Google Maps links that link out to uh, just a location on Google Maps isn't something I've noticed in the plugin. It may be there, but uh, that would be an interesting thing to experiment with. But mostly, that's like a, a different type of content where you would just add the link in your post if that's what you wanted. You can also do a click to load. There is a click to load functionality. So if you wanted, you could do that on mobile too. Uh, OK, so just to say like it's not like doomed, because it is possible to make a responsive Google Map embed. And it's the same essential system used by GeoMashup. But GeoMashup has a specific implementation that uh, adds the width and the height in ways that make this not work. But it works amazing if you have a default one and you put the right CSS. It's like this really weird uh, aspect ratio CSS trick with like a padding that's in percents. It's in negative percents. It's really strange. But what it does is it, you effectively get a ratio number that describes how wide it should be compared to tall. And then as you change the shape, it just gets smaller. So this was a window. You, you make it smaller, and you end up with this rather than mine or the default geo mashup now, which would be filling it vertically. right? So hopefully, this is something that will get added into the plugin at some point. At some point, I'm going to try and do it if he doesn't. But uh, it is possible. So that's the good news, even though right now we're still trapped uh, building our own responsiveness. So uh, I wanted to make a little bit about these location pop-ups, because they're the ugly part I was talking about. Um, and the way it works is there's a bunch of little template files inside the GeoMashup plugin. And if they exist in your theme, then it uses your version instead of theirs. So you copy that in, and then you just change it. You just start using exactly what you would use in your theme and seeing how it looks. Um, and loading in your own. See, I found that the best way was to just load my own CSS file into this so that I get all access to all my default CSS. And then my HTML just kind of worked, because my HTML for the main post column was already responsive. So it worked fine. Um, right? Uh, so this box is called dot location info, just as like a thing. You know, like it's, there's pretty good CSS classes scattered throughout the plugin to make it easier to style. And the, the, the main thing that was tricky to remember was that this box, Inside your post is an iframe. OK, so it is its own little world in terms of CSS and media queries, right? So in media queries, you say things like, if the page is uh, smaller than 800 pixels, do this. If it's smaller than 500 pixels, do that. Um, but in this case, that max width is like 300, because it's only the total of this. So when I say, if this page is smaller than 800 pixels, make this box, like hide the image, say. Um, it's not going to apply to the site. You can't control it based on the site. Instead, you control it based on the map, which is actually really great. And I wish there was a media query that said, if, this, the, if the container of this object is smaller than x. So it's a really nice treat, in fact, to do it that way. But it's a tricky one, because I was confused for a while why my Max widths had to be super tiny in order to function properly. Um, but as, and also, I gave this example for a reason, because you're going to have to do this, which is figure out your location info, and then micromanage the size. It's going to be at different um, screen, uh, at different sizes for the iframe, because it just you need to change a lot of things. Uh, or, or no, no, because it's not going to fit. And this will overrun if you're not careful. So you have to like keep making it smaller and smaller. OK. Um, this is like a quick little detour into attachments, because it's one of the things that GeoMashup doesn't let you tag by default. Um, but it can function by using another plugin that creates the post meta for, geo location, for the geo tags. And then it will uh, suck it in and let you put it on a map. So there's a, there's a great plugin called Media Library Assistant, sort of similar one with like never-ending documentation and a million features. Uh, but it, at its core, it's to make it so you can have post-meta fields and taxonomy on attachments, sort of like 
uh, advanced custom fields or whatnot, but for attachments. Uh, but adding taxonomy is huge. Um, and it imports the EXIF and the various other metadata from images and lets you map that. So you could say, if this image has like whatever the f-stop of the camera was, put that in a post-meta field, which WordPress doesn't do by default. WordPress uses that data, but not in any dynamic ways, and it doesn't give you any control. So custom Media Library Assistant is super useful for that. Um, and I worked on a site where we figured it out, how to take the geo data in the image, which was created in Picasa, but you know, Lightroom also inserts the geo data that you tag there, um, or from your images if they're uh, like from an iPhone or something that automatically puts it in. Take that GPS, put it into the standard WP storage, at which point Geo Mashup sucks it out. It's not easy, it's pretty complicated. We had to like invent some wheels. So there is two support threads here where you can read the logic and it, it it's kind of functions as a blog post of how to do it. Uh, the guy who makes this is so dedicated. Like we post a question and he writes back to say, oh, I'm not at home, but as soon as I get home, I'll answer. It's like, oh my God. Relax, enjoy yourself, right? Um, so here's just the example. is a site called Middle Memory, and it was a bunch of uh, fam old family pictures that she had tagged in Picasa with the names of people and the locations where things happened, uh, the travel that they'd done. They're from Alberta. So the, way, what, the outcome was that you go to an image, and you can see there's tags for the people. There's uh, categories for different um, aspects of the image to group them together and there's a map where you can see this is the single one to show where the image happened and this is the global one to show all of the image on the map. So that was pretty cool and like uh, the two plugins work fairly well together. Um, so there's a GitHub where he does the development and there's issues and a huge amount of documentation. So the feature usage and the template tags these are huge documents with tons of useful information. Um, and then one specifically about the PHP functions, which are basically the same as the tags and the shortcodes. Um, in, in a few words, are, are you familiar with Cardo DB? And is, is no. Okay. But maybe you guys should look it up. Sounds interesting. All right. <laughs> That's my talk. Any questions? OK. Thank you for listening. <laughs> <laughs>